welcome to Old Classic Car, and in this collection we are looking at singer cars of the 1920s to the early 1970s. And to start with, BDX 81B. This is a 1964 Singer Vogue. Quite a nice looking car. These were based on the contemporary uh, Hillman Super Minx. But this was sort of the more upmarket version, wooden dashboard, extra gauges and so on. Quite a swish car for the early 1960s. Now the first of several ancient photographs to appear in this collection, we've got RK3124. This is a Singer 10, 10 horsepower car, London registered, that series ran from 22 through to 1927. Lots of period fashions there, a little two gallon petrol can on the running board as well. Great stuff. I do like these and this is my favourite colour for them. This is a Singer Gazelle XJN534, that's a South End registered car. Um, dating to January of 1961. This was based very much on the Hillman Minx. Next up in this collection of Singers, we've got a Singer Roadster. Now, I think this is a 4A, um, judging by the wheels. The later cars didn't have the ventilated wheels like this one. This belonged to friends of mine. Uh, I took this about 1990-ish, 92, something like that. They had this car and also this single limo, CPK546, which I believe is still in the same family we went. This was, like I say, 1992, I think. We went to a Singer Owners Club rally at Chatsworth House in Derbyshire, and that's where this photo was taken. Here's a rear view of the same car. This was about three years later. This was 1995. You can just see my XJ12 on the right-hand side, bottom of the photograph there. Nice period vintage trailer behind the Singer on this occasion. I think we were probably going to Tatton Park Classic Car Show and that's why that extra gubbins was loaded in the back of the car. Now, this is the first of several photos of the rare Singer SM1500. This is a two-tone car. That's quite a rare sight. You don't see those too often. These were built from 1948 to 1954. This is an early pre-facelift car as well. That's a Plymouth registered example dating to about mid-1950. Now, one of the imp-based Singer Chamois, WYU 913H, late 1969 or early 1970. Good year, that was. Next up with all these old Singers, we're down to the NEC Classic Car Show. We've got KV9244. This is a rare beast from the early 1930s. This car actually dates to 1934. It's an X-Works racing car and it uh, competed at Le Mans in the same year, 1934. What a great old survivor that is. Just look at the pattern on the bodywork there, the old numbers on the doors. Great, great car. Now, my thanks, I must say thanks to Peter Ward. He supplied many of the Singer car photos that appear in this collection, including this one. This was in a scrapyard in New Zealand, Horro Pitto Motors. Um, there should be a video all about this scrapyard in the 1970s already on the channel. Check that out. And here we've got a Singer Hunter. This was the facelifted version of the SM1500. Here's a rear view, I think probably of the same Hunter. Um, shades of Rover P4, I think, in that design. Also has the rear hinged back doors bit of an outdated car really for its time didn't sell all that well for the company even though technically it was quite an advanced little car but um, anyway to vintage times and we've got here uh, a Singer uh, Junior a very nice two-tone car here red and black with a Pratt petrol can on the running board very very smart indeed Next up, a single Le Mans, BGJ 939. That car was registered in July of 1934. Now, I had a quick look on the DVLA website, and this particular singer hasn't been taxed since 2017. So perhaps it's off the road for a bit of restoration work. Who knows? If you uh, know what's happening to this car, please let me know in the comments. Now, another old black and white photo, and another example of the singer Roadster, the SM Roadster, and this. Again, it's got the ventilated wheel, so I think this will be a Singer Roadster 4A. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. The 4AB had the disc wheel, so this will be the 4A. 
And now to the late 60s or early 1970s, we've got a Singer Vogue here, the four-door car based on the Hillman Hunter and the Arrow series cars these were called and this was a Singer badged version. Singer of course was part of the Root group by this point in time, um, so shared you know, badge, badge engineering and so on. Now to a VSCC event at Alton Park, we've got two photographs now of this WX3515. This is a super rare fabric bodied Singer Junior Coupe. That's a really rare machine indeed. You've got the battery on the running board there. Beautiful little car that is. And as I said, it's fabric covered body on this one. There's a rear three quarter view of the same car. That's a very neat little car indeed. That's a Yorkshire registration. That series ran from 29 through to 32. Next up, back to the uh, early 1960s, 1964, we've got a Singer Vogue Estate. This looks like quite an original car, green with a white roof. You can see the rear tailgate, the split tailgate raised there. And yeah, that's really you know, quite a good usable, such a practical classic. That would be very, very nice indeed. Another of Peter's photos. He supplied so many of the photos that appear in this particular video, 646 APJ. That's a Surrey registered car, another Singer Hunter. Still got the starting handle sticking out of the front, so maybe it was just about to be started up. But yeah, I wonder where that car is now. Probably nowhere. To slightly more recent times, and alongside a Riley RM, we have HSK 396, which is another example of the SM Roadster. This is a 1952 car, solid wheels, so I think this will be a Singer 4AB Roadster. But if I've got any of these IDs wrong, please pop a note into the comments. Now, another one of these lovely old vintage photos. I do like these. A bit scratchy, a bit faded, but what a great atmospheric scene that is. We've got a Singer Junior on the left there with an Austin 7 Chummy next to that, complete with the uh, winter weather radiator cover on it. But what a great old image that is. And this was at Tatton Park many years ago in the mid 2000s, a Singer Gazelle, but not any old Singer Gazelle. This is a four seat two-door Singer Gazelle convertible no less. You don't see those too often now. And there's an interior view. So what have we got there? Nice wooden dashboard. Not too much in the way of instrumentation. We've got a column gear change so plenty of room for your feet. Bench seat as well so you could squeeze three people in there if you're particularly friendly. Back to Peter's photos taken in the uh, late 1970s in New Zealand, another Singer Hunter, green example there, looks like a good usable car. Singer seems to have sold particularly well over in New Zealand. Uh, the scrapyard series that I mentioned at Horopito Motors, there were so many Singers in there, it's well worth checking out that video. Anyway, back to the NEC, National Exhibition Centre and their classic car show, we've got CSV. 662, and that's a single Le Mans, and that car dates to 1934. There's a Singer Gazelle, but quite a late example. The earlier ones of this series, based on the Minx, of course, have the sort of oval grille, a bit like a Jaguar S type, but the very late ones had this much reduced, much simpler grille, and uh, that's what we have here. This car is on a D registration there, so updated to 1966. A bit older now, we've got a side-on view. This is another one of Peter's photos, so thanks to him. This is a 1948 Singer, maybe a 10 or a 12, something like that. And the date of this photo is 4th of July, 1959. somewhat older we've got YD2415 that's a Singer Junior this car is from 1931 that's a Somerset registered car and that particular registration series ran from 1930 all the way through to 1934 so quite a broad run for that particular registration that's Tatton Park LXJ665H is a late 1969 or early 1970 Singer Chamois now I've seen these with four headlights like this car and I've also seen them with just the two headlights one either side. I'm not quite sure when the changeover happened or why there were the two different types. So perhaps you could let me know in the comments. Now this I think is at the Lakeland Motor Museum. LTC 875C. That C registration puts it at 1965 this particular Singer Vogue. Alongside that one of its great rivals of the day the Triumph Vitesse. 
uh, here is that Horopito Motors scrapyard in New Zealand, taken in 1979 by Peter Ward. And that is a fairly early SM1500 we're looking at there. Quite an early grill. They did revise the grill and then they revised it again much more significantly to turn it into the Hunter. But this is a fairly early example. Now to Malvern, about 2006 or 7 or thereabouts, and we have another Singer Chamois. A two-door car based very much on the Hillman Imp, of course, e-registration, so that puts it squarely at early 1967, that particular car. Here's a nice one, PA, PN8972, this is on the Singer Owners Club stand, that is a Singer 9 Sport, it's not a Le Mans, it looks like a special bodied car, Sussex registered, and dates to 1932. Old black and white photo here and I think this is a Singer 11 but I could be wrong about 1934 1935 or thereabouts it's a Southampton register car and look it's got an L plate just hanging off the front bumper there so maybe one of those two is receiving lessons at the time of this photo another Peter's photos here and two singers for the price of one here in the foreground we've got another one of those fairly late Singer gazelles with a revised front grille Behind that, I think that was Peter's own Singer Hunter, complete with white wall tyres. Beautiful looking car, the paintwork really glistening in that example. Back to Malvern, quite a few years ago, another Singer Roadster, that's a 4AB with the disc wheels that I was talking about. The earlier car that we saw before has the holes around the wheel, but this one just has the four slots on each wheel. And that dates it to about early, what, about 1953 or thereabouts. There's a rear three-quarter view of the same singer with the Malvern Hills in the background and the Triumph Stag alongside. Big classic car show. This was in 2021 or 2022, so quite recently. A really smart singer gazelle in the foreground there, the Pontiac alongside. It's a nice car indeed. Which would you have this grey green for the Gazelle or the blue that we've already seen? I think I'll probably go for the blue. Another one of the Peters photos here. Looks like it dates to the 1970s. We've got a Mini on the left and a Renault 12 on the right hand side, I think. PLB 822 is a Singer Hunter. There's two of them there. That registration still shows as being current but untaxed since 1979. And this photo dates to 1979, so it soon came off the road after that picture was taken. Now, BCG 253, that's another Singer 9 Le Mans. You can tell the Le Mans because it's got those humps just ahead of the driver and passenger on the top of the scuttle, just behind the windscreen there. That's the difference visually between the Le Mans and the 9 Sports, which we'll also see examples of. Now, another rear view of a Singer Chamois. This is a 67 registered car, this is pretty bonkers. I believe this has got a 383 cubic inch Chevy V8 in the back, circa 480 brake horsepower. And I did do a quick check, this one is Sawn off the road at the moment. First registered January 1967. Back to New Zealand and another example of the Singer Hunter four door saloon. Looks like this one was in regular use still in the late 1970s, showing its age a little bit on the paintwork, but it was. What, about 25 years old or thereabouts at the time, so I think we can forgive it a little bit of patina. No patina here, just a glorious paintwork on TSV 371. Singer 9 Sports, a four-seat car. Like I say, the Le Mans has the humps just behind the screen on top of the scuttle, but this car, the Sports, is flat there. That's one of the main differences when you see a Singer. Now, side on view of another Arrow series car. We've seen the four door saloon Vogue already, a compatriot to the Hillman Hunter and the Minx. And this is a side on view of the Vogue Estate. One piece rear tailgate on these. The earlier Vogue Estates had a split rear tailgate, but this, I mean, what a great car that is. And back to Malvern, BLE 473, another Singer Le Mans. That's a four-seater, some were two-seaters, some were four-seaters, and this one's got a huge extra lamp on the front. That must be sort of doubling the, uh, the lighting equipment on that particular car, given the size of that extra lamp there. Another great old black and white photo here. I think this is probably a Singer Super 10, um, but if you know for sure, please let me know in the comments. Young lady at the wheel there.
Carrying on with these photos of classic Singer cars, we're down at the Haynes Motor Museum and surrounded by many other cars and interesting enamel signs is this maroon gazelle. It's a nice looking car, always well turned out. I always like the interiors of Roots Group cars. I always think they did look particularly nice, the leather trim, the wooden dashboards and so on. Great little cars. This was at a New Year's Day meeting not far from here a few years back, ALV 549. Another Singer 9 Le Mans, that's a two-seater. Great little car with its rival from Abingdon, the MG alongside. Which would you prefer though, Singer or MG? Both have big followings now. Different show, different year I think, but same car. Rear three-quarter view now of ALV 549. Another giveaway of the Singer is the twin spare wheel setup on the back. That's another sort of signature, if you like, that this is a Singer as opposed to an MG or a Wolseley Hornet Special, etc. Back to New Zealand in 1979, and there are two Singer SM1500s. The one in the distance looks even more mangled than the car in the middle of the photo, but neither looks like it was going anywhere anytime soon. It may even still be there, the scrapyard is still there. Um, like I say, check out the video on Horopito Motors for more Singer action. And here, UG3984. This was at the Astor Park Steam Rally in about 2007, I think. That's a Singer 9 Saloon, 1933. That's still taxed, and it last changed hands back in 2012, so about five years after this photo was taken. YV128, another SM1500. You can see um, there's a, quite a few idiosyncratic little design details on these cars. Very f totally flat windscreen and very thick windscreen pillars, which weren't universally popular. When cars like the Morris Mine had much shallower screened uh, pillars and so on. Now to Tatton Park, the classic car show, and another Singer Vogue. This is a G registered car. So G Reg ran from August 1968 through to July 1969. Another great old black and white photo here. We've got BMG 12, a Singer 9 Sports. This registration shows as no longer being current. That's a London registered car dating from about May of 1934. Our family had a very similar car to that, going back into the 1950s and early 1960s. Now, much older Singer here. This grey car is a 1919 Singer 10. The registration, in case you want to check up on it, is AN4354. That's a rare old girl. Okay, to 1965 now, and we have a Singer Vogue. This is one of the later cars with a square roof line and the squared off rear window. The earlier cars had wraparound rear screens, which I think look a little bit nicer to be honest, but I guess they just modernized the design a bit for that year. Another Singer Chamois, one of the fastback coupe versions of the basic Hillman Imp. Um, you also had the Sunbeam Stiletto as well, but this is a Singer Chamois. I checked that registration number before. It's on a J plate, so that dated to 70 or 1971. Another of Peter's photos now. He was a big fan, and probably still is, of Singer Hunters and SM1500. 68 BPA was looking a bit second-hand at the time of this photo, and that registration is now on a 2015 diesel BMW. Oh dear. Another vintage Singer here, another Singer Junior. Also two-tone, like the maroon and black car that we saw before, but slightly different layout. Um, just the tops of the doors are painted black and the wings, whereas the other car, it, the black continued along the top of the bonnet, if I remember correctly. Nice little car. Back to New Zealand and a rear three-quarter view of another Singer Hunter. This was in 1979 or thereabouts. But yeah, it looks like a really clean, very well-preserved car. And again, like I say, real shades of Rover P4 there, I think. Now, this was at Lowton Park, one of the vintage sports car club meets at Lowton Park in recent years. And this is the Bantam, a Singer-based single-seat racing car. This was taking part in the, uh, the hill climb meeting at Lowton Park. We've seen it several times there now. Great looking little car, that is. There's a driver's eye view of the dashboard and the controls. You can see the pre-selector gearbox uh, selector there, just on the just behind the steering wheel. So you pick your gear and then press the left-hand foot pedal 
to activate the gear when you are ready for it, hence pre-selector. Very common on Rileys and Daimlers, in fact. Now, two photos of 112 VKK. A Singer Gazelle registered in October of 62, and it, that registration is still current, actually. It's still on the DVLA system. It shows the car as being untaxed since 1988, though. So there are two possible you know, scenarios. Either it's still sat around in someone's garage somewhere, waiting restoration, or it was scrapped and uh, DVLA just didn't get didn't get notified of it. But yeah, that registration is still current, but um, is that car still around, or does, is it just the registration that survived? Who knows? Do you know? Okay, now not the best photo in the world, a bit grainy, but we've got 893 UPU, but it's such a rare car, it's a Singer Gazelle Estate. Now that registration doesn't exist anymore on uh, DVLA, I did check that one. That's an S6 series from 1961. That's a seriously rare car now. And I do love this one. This has been obviously taken out of an old photo album, complete with notes underneath. Mother, Dad and Auntie Lucy appear approach Bournemouth, 12th of June, 1930. And the car, I think, is a Singer 10 four-door, four-seat Tourer. What a great old scene that is. And also nice, a uh, Singer Vogue Estate. We've had one of these before. The previous one was at the WEM. Classic car gathering down in Shropshire, and this, I can't remember where this one was, but it's a much shinier example of the same car, but again, a rare survivor, and really, really useful old car, that is. And it's the same car, but a different show, I think this was, but, you know, the attention to detail on some of these cars is just fantastic. Look at those chrome-plated uh, rear hinges for the lift-up tailgate there. Really nice detailing. This car dates to 1966. It's a cold, frosty morning for the owner of this Singer Hunter, and it looks like he's just about to start it up on the starting handle. GTY84, um, that registration now survives on a 2020 Fiat Abarth. Whether the car itself is still around, I do not know. Now, BGX287, a lovely Singer 9 Coupe, a fixed head two door coupe. That's another car that used to, well, one of those used to be in our family years ago. After the Singer 9 Sports was sold on, it was replaced by a Singer 9 Coupe and then given away in the late 1960s. Now to Tatton Park, this was quite a few years ago. We've got another Fastback Singer Chamois here, four headlamp version. Back to the scrapyard in New Zealand, and oh dear, another very sad looking Singer SM 1500 with, I think, uh, Hilma Minx's either side of it. Real rival to the uh, Singer back in the day, the little Minx, very similar shape as you can tell uh, by that car on the left there. But yeah, none of them look like they were going anywhere again anytime soon. An ACD 595, we've seen this one that shows for many, many years locally. Another Singer 9 Coupe, very stylish little car indeed. Down to Gaydon and the British Motor Museum on the day we were there a few years ago. There was a big collection of Hillman Imps and de you know, derivatives, including this Singer Chamois, a maroon example, F registration, so that's what, 67 or early 1968 in date. But yeah, looks like a good, very original car. There's a rear view of the same car. Quite unusual alley wheels on there. What make them, what make of wheels are those? I don't think I've ever seen those before. Let me know if you recognise them. Still plenty of old Singer car photographs to come, so don't worry. Now here's an interesting one. I think this was taken around the Ellesmere Port area in the 1960s. The car is, of course, a Singer Vogue. The registration, 1STU. I mean, that's going to be worth a few, Bob, now if you're called Stuart. That registration at the moment resides on a 2015 Toyota, of all things. Back to a VSCC hill climb meet, and we've got WN8515. A singer based special. Another of Peter's New Zealand photos, and this was taken in a car park somewhere, but yeah, many classic cars there to 
Ogilover, we've got Morris Traveller and a very rare Hilma Minx estate just behind this Singer Gazelle. It's not a Husky, that was a two-door car, the estate, but that is the rare four-door Hilma Minx estate in the background. Now another photo, slightly fuzzy, but a very interesting subject, another Singer 9 Coupe, Coupe BPH 108. That's a Surrey registered car from 1934 with blackout equipment fitted. You've got the painted white front ends and the mud guards there and one of those headlamp masks as well. Two photos now of another late vintage Singer Junior. This is EV2641 as a registration of this particular car. It's an Essex registered Junior. It's currently on Sawn, which is the statutory off-road notification. If you're not here in the UK, that's what that means. So it means it's been declared as off the road at the moment, but still registered. It's a 1931 car, that, and that was seen at the Astle Park Steam Rally back in 2007. Okay, another Singer Vogue, this one on a C registration, it's a 1965 of course, and again it's one of those higher roofed, squared off back window versions. Very similar uh, styling to the uh, contemporary Humber Hawk actually, that went through a similar styling change. They had the curvier roofs and the wraparound rear windows until they were replaced. Now RGA, RGO 108, another SM Singer Roadster. That's a London registered car from 1955, and going off those plain wheels, it's a Singer 4AB SM Roadster. It's a nice Jaguar alongside it as well, 420G. Back to Ellesmere Port area, we've got a few classics here on the left there, it's just an old Austin Cambridge, one of the Mark II Farina design Cambridges, and a Ford Prefect 100E. And 967 TMB, a Singer Gazelle, complete with AA members badge on its grille. And another one, 860 XBF, the Singer Gazelle there, and my favourite two-tone shades of blue. That was at a classic car show many years ago. I can't remember where that was. I think it's possibly Chumley Castle. That's a pre-war cars, an ABH 337. That's another Singer 9 Sports, not the Lamore. And alongside it, there's a very nice little Lanchester LD10, one of the Briggs bodied cars. Another Singer Chamois here, UHS 686G. That series uh, came along in August 68 and ran through till July of 1969. I like those wide steel wheels as well. They look like they've been borrowed from a Mark II Lotus Cortina or something like that. Same with the hubcaps as well, actually. Now this is one of my favourite photos that Peter sent me, a very sad looking little Singer saloon of the early 1950s. At first I wasn't sure if this was the SM1500 or the Hunter, but the, uh, the badge on the top of the bonnet there tells me this is the earlier car, the SM1500, but looking very, very sorry for itself, very derelict, but what a great picture. Now GFO146, this, I've checked this one, it's a 1933 Singer 1.5 litre 4 seat Tourer. It does actually say two liter, I think, that little badge on the bonnet. Uh, every reference I've found to this particular car says it's a one and a half liter, so we'll go with that. Oh dear, very poorly looking uh, Singer Gazelle that Peter photographed many years ago. This one looked like it's been sat for a very long time, very rotten at the back of the front wings there at the top. They were very prone to rusting there, and also where the bonnet hinge, their rear hinge bonnet, and if you pop the bonnet up where the hinges mount under the windscreen, they often rot out there as well. Back to pre-war singers, we've got ALV 549 again, that's on the left hand side, and in the foreground WP 7013. What a great pair they are, and that was at another VSCC New Year's Day meet a few years ago. Almost done, and this is back to Horopito Motors in New Zealand, and oh dear, they've dragged in the remains, the rusting remains another Singer Hunter there, that one looks very very sad, it looks like it's reached the end of the road, I wonder what happened to that car, the grill's looking well mullered as well, that's looking pretty sorry. Now this, I photographed this one in the auction area at Tatton Park Classic Car Show, but this must have been in the early 1990s, early to mid 1990s, we've got a Singer Roads to 4AB I think, um, but if you know if what's happened to this car, has it been restored now? Is this Singer back on the road now? I'd hope so after all this time, but you never really know. 
I think this was another one of Peter's cars, another Singer Hunter. You can see the horse's head mascot on the top of the radiator grill there. That was one of the uh, key identifiers for the Hunter. The, the previous SM1500 didn't have that on it. But that horse's head was a feature of the Singer Hunter. And to round this collection of classic Singer car photographs off, we've got a 635 UXE, another example of the Super Minx based Singer Vogue with the wraparound rear window. This is the curvier roof and wraparound window that I was talking about before when I was talking about that 1965 Vogue. This is a slightly earlier car from about 61 or 62 or thereabouts. Quite a smart car. It's got those clip on white wall tyres. Yeah, quite a sharp looking car indeed. And that Singer Vogue rounds out this collection of over 95 photographs of vintage and classic Singer cars. Thank you so much for watching this video. There are quite a lot of compilations like this on the channel now, so please have a look around. Try this uh, channel search and sort of search for your favourite car makes or models, and you might be surprised what turns up. And there'll be more videos along very, very soon. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.